Good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, and subscribing to the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, man, this does not work. Let's get open for business. And let's wake up the football gods. Wake up, guys. It is game day. It is week three of the preseason tonight, 7 o'clock. We'll be live streaming tonight, of course. My man E2 Blue and Clarence will be in the house with Michael Anthony Fitness. We'll have some chicken wings up in here, and we'll have the Dallas Cowboys playing the dress rehearsal, or at least what used to be the dress rehearsal game. Um, football has changed quite a bit where we're scared to actually play players now in the preseason. It's basically keep guys in bubble wrap. You're a starter, so we're not going to use you until the season gets here. You know, there's something about living your life scared, about never taking any risk. You know, you can sit there in your house, safe and sound, and not try anything or do anything. But the reality is, is you're going to miss out. You're going to miss out on a lot. Now, you know, I'm old school. You know, we used to have six weeks of preseason, you know, you know training camp, two-a-days, you know, game after game after game. And now it's gotten so your starting team might play a series in the first game, maybe a quarter in the second game, and it used to be playing into the second half of the third game. But now you see teams like Carson Wentz, he's not going to play at all preseason because it's scared. In life, you cannot live your life scared. Things are going to happen. You know, and this is one of the reasons why I always say, don't get too hyped about September games. You really don't know what team is going to be what until really about the middle of October because really September now is the preseason. I don't know why we continue to have four preseason games because nobody plays in them. Now, here's the thing. This week, it's rather important for a lot of guys. You've got next week's game, which is basically the Constellation Bowl. It's going to be 37 guys that will be cut after that game for the final roster. 37 guys. And the Dallas Cowboys have to figure out what 53 we want to keep. And that's a hard decision because you have some guys here that are actually – Good enough to start other places, but won't be able to start here. There's young guys that you want to hold on to because you're looking at the potential down the road, but you're also looking at the team this year and saying, we might have an opportunity to make a run, so maybe we hold on to that veteran. But then you've got some veterans that you look at and say, you know, this younger guy can do almost the same thing for less money, so maybe I cut this guy so that way I have a little extra wiggle room for the future. You know, there's guys like Kerry Hader, who is kind of a defensive end, defensive tackle, because he's about 270. But he's got a high motor, and his versatility may be a reason that you hold on to him, because Rod Martinelli likes bringing in defense in waves, because you're keeping those guys fresh, where they can pin their ears back, keeping guys like Antoine Woods and Malik Collins, keeping those guys, and then you can spell them with a, you know, a, a motor, and a carry hater is going to benefit this team because if we can put that pressure on and our defense, we haven't really talked much about our defense because we've had so much drama with the big three contracts and Zeke and Cabo and, you know, Zeke and Marshall Falk. We've been all focusing over here, listening to that, but quietly our defense has been out there working their butts off and we have so many defensive linemen that you look at the potential. And it's going to be tough. And I dare say we may see some veterans cut that we're not expecting because we have so much young talent. You know, and you look at guys that are been around for a while, you say, well, you know, this guy's been consistent all these years. He's been a team player. You know, maybe he's been a team captain and stuff. But understand, it's a young man's game. And when you get older, you get more expensive. And if I can find that young guy that's going to be able to take your place, he's going to take your place now. So for this game, you probably won't see the starters much. I don't know how much we're going to play. Very rarely are we seeing 
starting offense is now playing into the third quarter. We're seeing basically a quarter, and that's it. Let's get these guys out of here. So I don't know how much our starters will play. I don't know. But for the second team, third team guys, this is important because they are now playing for their NFL lives. And there's going to be some strong battles up in there. Um, I'm looking for the defensive line because, well, I'm always a defensive guy. I want to see what my command, Kerry Hader, can do. I want to see how Tristan Hill can do. He's been a little bit slower than I thought he would thus far. But because Antoine Woods, who last year was a four stringer, came out of nowhere because Malik Collins is finally healthy and in a contract year, he may not be able to sniff the field too much. He's going to have to earn his time out there. And even Taco. Taco has been put on blast this offseason and through training camp that, listen, nothing's guaranteed just because you were a high draft pick. You have to perform in order to be in here. And we've seen some, some, some bad plays, you know, where he's looking like a pinball because he's lost his technique. He's up high playing these games. And other times we see him getting to the quarterback. So what we need to see from him is some more consistency. We need to see him being able to take it to another level and stay there consistently. So those are some of the things we're looking for right there. I'm still wondering what happened with George Iloka because George Iloka, we have not heard much of anything out there. And it doesn't seem like anybody's able to supplant Jeff Heath. So, you know, he gets a lot of grief. I hope he worked on his math angles because I want to see him making lights out plays because he does end up being sometimes in the right place at the right time. So all of those things are kind of coming together. We got these young secondary players, the Joe Jacksons, that you want to see how he does and see if he can be able to you know, find a spot on this team. You want to see Anthony Brown continue to get back to where he was as a rookie. You want to see Lewis and um, to be able to continue to play like he did last week and as well as a woozy. So it'll be nice to really focus in on the defense. I, last week really focused in on the offense where we looked at that drive and stuff. But, you know, there's so many different players and so much to look at that I wish I had more time to just really go through all the film. Um, and I'm hoping that we get to see a series or two with the Cowboys offense. Um, knowing that Tyron Smith, knowing that Zach Martin's not playing, you still want to see if Xavier Salafalo can, and I know I pronounced his name wrong, um, if he continues to be consistent as well as, um, boy, I'm having a brain fart here as well as Connor Williams and some of the other guys, oh, and Cam Fleming, um, in absence of our starters. So there'll be a lot to watch, a lot to, to deal with, and I'm ready to get on with the season. Now, the elephant in the room, the man that's a little hungry right now who's lost weight, it's going to probably be a circus today. Um, he's coming back to town. We know that Stephen Jones is confident that a deal can get worked out. We know they're back at the star. We know Zeke Elliott wants to get a deal done. We know he's been offered top five or top two money. And he's also tweeted that, you know what, I should be paid a 10 to 20% increase. I don't know how this is going to work out, but I do believe it's going to work out. Because in the end, like Demarcus Lawrence said, I ain't leaving money on the table. And I don't believe Zeke Elliott is going to leave money on the table either. So let's get this thing done. Let's get this thing settled. And let's get ready for the season. Whew. Can't believe it. Remembering, 226 days. And now we're down to 12. Mm. I guess we'll have to turn this countdown clock into a uh, countdown to kick off of a weekly games. Mm. Well... I've got to go to my day job. I got to go to West Virginia and build a stores building and uh, get back and get ready for the games. I got chicken wings on tap for tonight. I might do something else a little different too, uh, special, but we'll see. Don't forget, we're going to be doing a mega um, tailgate at FedEx Field um, week two. So make sure you guys, if you're in, if you're going to be going to that game and everything else, we're going to be in red zone lot. Um, you can email me at cowboysmark94 gmail uh, for more details and stuff and things if you want to be able to help out and do some things with it. Um, 
week one will be in Dallas Giants and everything else so if you're looking for game packages and things go to Cowboys experience okay Cowboys experience they'll hook you up make sure you tell them that I sent you and um, they'll give you an Emmett Smith autograph excuse me an Emmett Smith book or an autograph picture of a current player and things so Definitely, if you want to have the Cowboys experience, definitely go to Cowboys experience. I'm Mark Holmes, and, well, I'm going to go get to my day job so I can get my butt back. I will see you with any news on the Cowboys.